He is the world's most unjust sniper. He fired more than 2,000 rounds a day, but never killed a single person. For two years, he imagined blood and brains, the thrill of a shot to the spine, the thrill of shooting a man in the spine and killing him. But the sad thing is he's been on guard day and night. He was never allowed to fire a single shot. Every day, he watched the people come and go through the 8x. He almost went crazy until he accumulated 200,000 rounds of ammunition. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. Picked up the sniper rifle and aimed at the human body. One shot, two shots, three shots and three bodies. But thankfully, he was not court-martialed because these men were rebels who had done nothing wrong. The massacre was classified as war. I thought he would feel guilty about it and came out of the shadows. But after he retired from the army, he went even crazier. He went to the top of a city. He set up a long sniper, aiming down. He wanted to kill someone. He then fired six shots in a row. five people and then escaped although david received the report he quickly led the police to the scene of the murder and found bullet casings at the scene coins and other evidence by unlocking the fingerprints i'm sorry the sniper's identity was quickly identified bill the former navy seal senior sniper but then again how could a trained sniper leave such obvious evidence at the scene it didn't matter. The police immediately arrested Bill and found the vehicle he used to escape from his house and the tools to make the bullets. During Bill's 17-hour interrogation, Bill didn't say a word. He just wrote out the word Jack Reacher on a piece of paper. The officers were baffled. Who is Jack Reacher? The police have checked a lot of information and there is no such person. Just when the police were at a loss, a man who claimed to be Jack Reacher came to the door of his own accord. Jack Reacher, a veteran investigator, served in multiple locations. Out of nowhere he had no place to stay he told officers be a professionally trained sniper after killing a target he told the officer that a professionally trained sniper can't leave a lot of clues at the scene and a professional sniper wouldn't choose this spot as a high point so there's only one possibility and that's that the killer wasn't bill someone planted the murder jack asked to meet with bill to find out what happened but what he didn't expect was bill was already unconscious at this time he was beaten by other prisoners on the way to escort him this makes jack Jack more convinced of his own deduction because a few years ago, Bill was in the army at the time of the murder case. He was the one who took over the case and that's why Bill didn't talk during the interrogation. Only Jack's name was written out because he knew he'd been perfectly planted. He trusted Jack's investigative skills but Bill's defense attorney. Jenny didn't like Jack's approach, he thought Jack was putting on a show. It wasn't until Jack was mobbed by a group of desperados, Jenny didn't realize Jack's presence might actually be a threat to something. A threat. So she faced Jack and told him what had happened. The first victim was a full-time nanny. Every day, she would take her employer's children to the supermarket. The second victim was a single mother, raising her son alone. The third victim was a good wife and mother. She had just gone to the mall to buy a men's watch on the day she was killed. In order to surprise her husband and deliberately concealed the spending records. The fourth victim was a female vice president. She ran a construction company with her husband, but her husband was overworked, suddenly died in the office. After her husband's death, the rival company wanted to take over her by force, but the female vice president insisted on refusing. The fifth victim was an investment broker, had a big fight with his wife the morning before he was killed. There was a bouquet of flowers with her when she was killed. It was supposed to ease the conflict between the couple. Several victims died in the same place. There was no connection. This had to be ruled a random killing. But Jack had a very different opinion after hearing it. He thought that even if a housewife wanted to surprise her husband, he didn't think a housewife had to hide her spending even if she wanted to surprise her husband. The broker didn't buy flowers in the afternoon when she came home, but chose to buy flowers at noon. The housewife saw the agent shot and killed, instead of running away in panic. Instead, she took a few steps forward, but these points do not prove anything definitively. While Jack and Jenny were confused, Jack and Jenny were confused when they happened to see the Audi downstairs. Jack had a memory that this car had been following him recently, so he asked Jenny to check the information of the suspicious car. Do not know if you do not check. Once I checked it, I was shocked. This car is in the name of a company called WT Construction, and this WT Construction Company, the fourth victim, female vice president of the construction company, is fighting a lawsuit, preparing for a forced takeover. So this series of clues connects. WT wants to buy the female president's company. The female vice president insisted not to agree. That's why the idea of hiring a hitman to kill her and the other four victims. The other four victims were just a deliberate cover-up by the killer, used to cover up the 
real target. The killer's motive is known. And how did the killer frame Bill? Jack and Jenny looked up a lot of information about Bill. They found that Bill was a loner in real life. The only hobby is to shoot to practice marksmanship. So we can only go to Bill off and go to the shooting range, looking for clues. But who knows the boss of the range is a strange old man. There is a strange old man in the range who likes to meet people with martial arts. To get something out of him, you have to shoot the target three times in a row. Jack had no choice but to try. Fortunately, all hit, although in the eyes of the old man, barely pass. But the reality is that this level is already very good. Before Jack could ask a question, the old man took the initiative to say to him, I have another client here who is even better than you. His name is Bill. This all hit Jack in the heart, because that's exactly the question he wanted to ask. Then the old man took out Bill's paper and showed it to Jack. Jack saw right away what was going on. There's no way Bill could have do this, because he was at the top of his game. He was not at this level. This can be determined that there is another person. So Jack asked the old man to look through the old surveillance. He found that a mysterious man. He had secretly changed Bill's target. So the culprit was this man. He secretly gave Bill the score he had set. Then he flattered him. Bill felt that he had made a very good friend. So he talked about everything. The reason why the man was able to plant such a perfect frame. It was because he knew that Bill had a history of killing people with sniper rifles. And he borrowed it from him. It was a perfect illusion. But thankfully, Jack's investigator was was smart enough. Even if that was the case, the paper would definitely have had the fingerprints of the man who planted the evidence. Just when he was looking for the right moment to turn the case around once and for all, Jenny was abducted by Officer David. It turns out he was the mole in this case, the boss behind their unification. It was a guy named Cyclops. This group is an organized crime gang. Everywhere they go, they would try to embezzle a construction company and then join with politicians to build some unwanted projects and get huge profits and Jack's appearance was about to spoil their fun. Then they called Jack, using Jenny as a threat to get Jack to meet them at the foot of a mountain. This is certainly to let Jack go to die. And Jack threatened them. Do not touch a hair of Jenny. Otherwise, the fingerprints taken from the paper will be sent to the federal police. After Jack's threats, successfully forced to find out the exact location of Jenny's detention, the villains were also collectively ready for the battle. And Jack had help. It is the strange old man from the shooting range. But the old man's eyes are not good because of his age, can only hear the sound to cover Jack, and gave Jack a bad idea. Let him put the car seat down and drive in upside down, so that even if the opposite side of the firing frenzy, it is difficult to shoot at you. It works, yes, but not easy to control all. Before you get to the rocks, you're stuck. Jack had no choice, can only rush out of the car to find a chance to break out. The strange old man is there one shot at a time, and then one shot at a time, can still stir up trouble, but it is quite effective. The big bald guy couldn't find where the shot was fired. Angry shooting around, Jack found an opportunity to punch, picked up the gun and charged. And the old man has a new action. Driving around in his truck, the buzzing engine roar, attracted the little soldiers had to show up to see. And Jack seized this opportunity and shot them all down. The Cyclops' brother in the house finally sat down. He sent out the sniper killer who framed Bill. And the killer was shot in the head by Jack right after he left the house. But Jack didn't kill him. Instead, he chose to fight him physically. Maybe the whole case made him too angry. Then Jack went all the way inside. He found the room where Jenny was being held. But at this point, David was very good at his job. He had a gun in his right hand pointed at the door. He had a gun in his left hand and pointed it at Jenny. Maybe this was the perfect plan in his mind. Not even me. David still underestimated Jack's marksmanship. Now all that was left was the culprit. Cyclops. Jenny just picked up the phone and tried to call the police. Jack was determined to kill. A direct shot. Because Jack knew in his heart. Keeping him would only give him the opportunity to do whatever he needed to do to survive. The end of the story. Jack left in the old man's pickup truck. Bill woke up the next day. But he suffered from temporary memory loss due to a traumatic brain injury. Jenny then pulls out some pictures and asks him. If you had to choose a place to set up your gun, where would you choose? Although Bill's memory was short-lived. But with his muscle memory from years of sniping. He picked the bridge right away. It was a completely different location than the one the police found. Jenny also used multiple pieces of evidence to help clear his name. Bill's name was cleared fairly and impartially.